Welcome to the Wyoming Women's Business Center's Artist Insights webinar series. Today's presentation is Building Your Shop Small Campaign. My name is Jessica Brower, and I'm the marketing director here at the Wyoming Women's Business Center. And I will be your speaker today, along with our very special guest, Robert Bryans. Together, we will be chatting about participating in local shopping campaigns and pop-up events for the holiday season that is sneaking up on us. So before we start, just some housekeeping. I wanna point out the Zoom control panel on the bottom of your screen. I want to call attention to both the questions and the chat function. If you have any comments or questions, this is where you'd like to be. So go ahead and use those to communicate with us. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be sent out to all of the registrants shortly after the live event today. And you can also visit our website at wyomingwomen.org and navigate to the training tab to view any upcoming webinars as well as past webinar recordings. And if you're joining us live, a survey will launch shortly after we close the presentation. If you could just take a few moments to complete that, it does provide us and our funding partners with some really valuable information. And just as a reminder, all participants are muted to minimize background noise. So again, if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, which I certainly hope you do, please go ahead and type those into the chat box or the questions panel, and we will be sure to get to them. So just some quick information about the WWBC in case you aren't familiar with us already. We're a nonprofit organization and our mission is to enable and empower Wyoming's entrepreneurs with a special emphasis on women. We do that through three distinct programs. The first is our business counseling and training program, which is always free. The second is our microloan program, which offers loans from $500 to $50,000 for businesses that have been denied from a traditional lending source. And lastly is our artist development center that we run in conjunction with the Works of Wyoming store, which is here in downtown Laramie, but also online. And what I really want to get across to you is that we specialize in micro enterprises. So what is a micro enterprise? It is a business that's going to have less than six employees and the majority are only one or two person businesses. And these businesses were able to launch for under $35,000. So businesses like yoga studios or hairstylists, in-home daycare providers, marketing consultants, cleaning services. And in this series in particular, I really want to highlight that this also includes artists, makers, designers, writers, musicians. You are all micro enterprises too. So if you're not already a client of the WWBC and you'd like to be, it's quick and it's easy to sign up. You can sign up by going to wyomingwomen.org and clicking on that sign up now button at the top of the page. But if you'd rather contact us, you can find some contact email and phone number at the end of this presentation. So one final shout out goes to our presenting sponsor, which is the Wyoming Arts Council. <clears throat> Thanks to their generous support, we're able to offer free support to Wyoming's artists through the artist development program, the Works of Wyoming store and this webinar series. So with that, let's get into today's presentation. First, I'm going to introduce you to our guest, Robert Bryans. So his main disciplines of art are painting, drawing, printmaking, graphic design, and illustration. You can see some of his work on this slide. We'll have some more on some slides here in a moment. So this is what Brian has to say. Growing up in Wyoming at different times in my life, there have there have always been unique challenges, but there have always been a comforting continuity in my interactions with the landscape and the elements of life that exist there. Nature, the wild, is and always has been my refuge during tough times, my launch pad for inspiration, and inspiration for sharing the happiness, the renewal I find in nature. The natural world and its conflict with humans' needs to exert artificial control is the perfect catalyst for artistic inspiration and expression. <clears throat> Strangely enough, Wyoming has almost always been a battleground for land and what it can provide. So with that, Brian, or not Brian, Robert, you got the double, the double first name thing there. I, I know your name. <laughs> Oftentimes <laughs> I've found that artists oh. don't consider themselves to be entrepreneurs despite the work that they've done to launch and sustain a business for their art um, comparable to any other industry. So could you tell me a bit about how your art turned into an entrepreneurial adventure for you? 
Um, I had worked and done enough things in my life um, and come to the final realization that art and making things, um, expressing my myself through my inherent ability to create and wow people um, was going to be my ticket to like a lifetime of happiness and, and um, ability to um, supply myself and uh, the people around me uh, with what they need to survive. You know, and that's, I think, what it comes down to is like, how can you survive and be happy at the same time? You know, and those two things are, are definitely important. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I think that's true for any entrepreneur, whether they're creating art or offering a service or, you know, providing a meal for somebody. I think uh, that's a thing that as entrepreneurs, we all share a deep space in our hearts for the thing that we're offering our community. So today we're here to talk about collaborating with shop local campaigns, which I know is a task that you're familiar with. Um, and before we jump into it, I'm gonna go over a bit on this just to give some background information to our audience in case you aren't familiar. So you've all likely heard of or participated in shop local campaigns in your community before. They're just as they sound, coordinated campaigns to encourage supporting small locally owned businesses, especially around the holiday season. So as shopping began to move online years ago, pulling money away from the mom and pop stores, especially in our downtowns, in our communities, these campaigns became much more popular. And one of the largest is hosted by American Express. And you can see the screenshot here from their website. So their event is called Small Business Saturday, and it was launched in the midst of the recession in 2010. It's always hosted on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, and it was designed to kick off the holiday shopping season and keep those dollars local. So as opposed to Cyber Monday or Black Friday, it's capturing those sales and focusing them on the small businesses in a community and really trying to bolster them when we all know we're gonna go out and spend money for the holiday season. So perhaps your community hosts a Small Business Saturday event. Many communities throughout the state have adopted this event. Um, the Wyoming Business Council has even recognized it on a statewide level. So here are just a few examples. Here on the left, this is from the Business Council's Shop Smart, Shop Safe, Shop Wyoming campaign, which was a statewide initiative launched in response to COVID and the unexpected closures of many of our favorite businesses and all of those roadblocks to shopping as we'd previously known it. Um, so this just goes to show it's not always Small Business Saturday. It's not always holiday shopping. Um, these shop local campaigns can pop up any time of year and they do. And it just varies community, community to community. Um, on the right here is a poster created by June Glasson who was an artist and former resident of Laramie. Um, she popped up at a local store to sell her works during Small Business Saturday. So she was able to sell her art in a pre-existing store and capture those sales, which is a thing I'm gonna talk about here in a couple slides. Here are some more examples from Rollins, Rock Springs, and Cheyenne, all different approaches to the same mission, just trying to get people to shop in their community. On the left, that's Small Business Saturday. In the middle here, shopping where Santa shops. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and on the right, spooky specials in Cheyenne. So capturing sales while people are out um, preparing for Halloween. Similarly, here's another event from Cheyenne Frontier Days on the left. So another time when people were gonna gather and be spending money and a flyer from a past Small Business Saturday pop-up event, which just happens to be the event where Rob popped up to sell his works. So we're gonna jump back into some questions here, but one last thing, um, I wanna unpack the concept of a pop-up. Uh, you've heard me say this word pop-up a handful of times now, and perhaps you're wondering what I mean by that. So a pop-up shop or a pop-up event is a temporary experience or a storefront. So whether you're a small business owner, a service provider, an artist, whatever that looks like, 
Um, maybe you work from a studio or at home and you're thinking, well, I don't have a store. This isn't something I can do. This isn't relevant to me. Uh, and this is where I say, actually, it can be. This is where the pop-up comes in. So these are short-term arrangements and they're great for businesses who are looking to capture sales, especially around a season of shopping. So we've talked a lot about the holidays. Cheyenne Frontier Days is obviously going to be big for Cheyenne going to be big for Cheyenne. In your community, there's probably a time when you know that people go out and they're ready to spend money. So as an artist or a maker, there are abundant opportunities in popping up in pre-existing businesses, at local markets, at events, and exploring how you can get involved in these local shopping campaigns um, that are undoubtedly happening in your community is really valuable. So with that, Rob, why do you think it's important for artists to participate in local events and campaigns that encourage local shopping? First of all, it keeps people on their toes. It keeps the public who is your audience, the public is your market, um, it keeps them on their toes. Um, oftentimes, you know, you think of like how you get people into like a restaurant or into a store and it's about doing things like a special, um, doing like a menu special at a restaurant or doing a sales pitch, um, like a real big, like 50% off, buy one, get one free at a store or something like that. So part of it is trying to keep people on their toes, give them something fresh, something exciting that they don't know when to look forward to it or where it's gonna be necessarily, but they, they know that you're going to be there doing something someplace sometime they can count on it you know and i think that's you know keeping people on their toes but also being incredibly persistent um, as an artist really being a dog about sniffing out those opportunities to um, put yourself out there and uh, show your craft um, Casper has been an excellent place for me to um, be a pop-up artist. I've been a pop-up artist at the Metro Coffee Shop in Casper and at uh, 1890 Screen Printing when uh, my friend Scott Cotton had that shop. Um, I've also been a pop-up artist in Lander um, in the summertime when they have art in the park uh, at the city park there. Um, you know, it's all about just trying to find those places and those times where you feel like the audience is going to be um, kind of have their interest piked enough to, to really get there and be present and look forward to seeing things. And, um, you know, here in Laramie, uh, I've done things at Bank of the West. Um, I've done things uh, with one of our local uh, drinking establishments, uh, you know, and, and it's all about just, I think, finding a little niche spot to show up, you know, and really blow people out of the park with whatever you have, you know, maximize the small area that you're given and really try to like pack in the wow factor for people. And, you know, it's also about supporting other people because usually when something like this is going on, there's a whole train of us doing it. And so you're out there as part of a network trying to support not only yourself, but create such a swarm of activity that people really can't help but come out. You know, upcoming here in Laramie, we're gonna have something called the art and music thing. And we normally have it, you know, the last week of uh, November or the first week of December, somewhere in there. Um, and the Lincoln uh, community, is it the Lincoln, the Laramie Plain Center is the place where we do that in the gym. And it's just, you know, kind of a thing that falls together every year. Somebody, gets together the uh, you know energy to say, hey, I'm gonna put in the money to do this. Is anybody else interested? And we all kind of like fall in, you know? And it's so keeping that network 
the people together doing these things helps the whole because it creates such a, a buzz that people really can't help but go out and get caught up in it and get swept around. And eventually, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, law of averages. If you have enough people out there doing it, you know, people are going to buy things. People get swept up into it and they do, they get um, into a little bit of a, a capitalist frenzy and they get out their, their pocketbooks and their wallets and, and they love it. You know, and that's part of America. That's part of, um, you know, the holidays is, is just trying to get people excited for things when it's colder, you know, outside and when it's hard and it's, and it's really, it's a, it's a dangerous time to be out, but how do you get people out? You know, and usually it takes that network, you know, yeah. and it takes bigger businesses looking out for smaller people. You know, and I, I think about, you know, the downtown area in Casper, the curved streets that go through uh, Second and Center Street and all those little shops in there, um, you know, and how those shops are really competing against the mall and Walmart, you know, out on the east side of Casper. And so those businesses have really picked it up with like their uh, pop up art walk and really had people come down into the downtown area and reinvigorate, you know, the interest in what those shops have to offer by creating, um, you know, that partnership with local artists and then these shops that have been there for generations, some of them, you know, and reinvigorating and pumping new life into both the artists in the community and those shops. It's incredible. Well, and that's, you know, that's, I'm so glad you mentioned that because you know, I think if anybody is listening to this or if you're attending this live and you may think, well, I'm not an artist, I don't have a product to pop up somewhere. Well, perhaps you can host an artist. Um, perhaps you can bring in something unique and maybe that's a visual artist, maybe that's a performing artist, maybe that's a musician. Um, you know, it's gonna look different based on, on your business and what you have, um, but there's so many opportunities to create that, um, create that in, intrigue and keep people on, on their toes, just like you said, and keep things fresh, oh. especially when we're in competition with a big box stores, malls and uh, online shopping, which is always going to be more convenient. So we have to provide uh, value and experience um, that kind of counteracts that convenience. Absolutely, personality, personality mm -hmm. and, you know, just that human, that human element really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, when you pick these events to participate in, I mean, obviously you've been able to partner with people throughout the state. How do you go about deciding um, how, who you'd like to participate with? Do you seek these people out or do they seek you out? What does that look like? It's a little bit of both. And, and some of it's just letting seren serendipity um, take its course. Um, you know, the more you do, uh, the, the more you develop your nose for what shows get the best reception and have been out there for a while maybe. Um, but you also kind of figure out what times are the best times to be out there and showing. Um, you kind of have to look at the state's economics. You have to be a little bit, um, wider view of how people are doing in your town, how people are doing in the towns that you plan on going to, to participate in uh, small businesses. Um, you have to think about, you know, what are the economics like there? Um, how can I best suit these people and try to fit what I'm doing a little bit to where they're coming from financially um, and just, culturally um you know these are these are different things that you have to just kind of you know go to the places where you are interested in selling things you know go go to the shops go to the towns and visit you know go to the coffee shops and see how people are interacting you know see how the businesses have set up their their storefronts and what's working for them because a lot of these businesses have been there long enough that they know what people want and what's going to keep their business alive you know and it's it's a back and forth it's a it's a communication 
And so, you know, it even comes down to weather, you know, thinking about, you know, doing an art in the park, you have to think about, do I have a tent ready to go? Um, am I concerned about getting any of this stuff wet? And if it rains, what am I going to do? You know, if a big wind comes up, what am I going to do? And so you do have to think about, you know, like, how am I going to fill my, my pocketbook and, you know, those things, what art am I going to take? But you also have to think about the big things like the financial situation in the community and, you know, weather situations and some of that bigger stuff. And so it's a, it's a, it's a practice. And you, as soon as you start doing it, you're going to realize quickly either as a business who, who participates with an artist or the artist participating with the business, you're going to learn things instantly. You're going to say, when I do this next time, I'll do it this way instead of this way. Um, it, there's a learning curve, but I think it's a small enough, less stressful situation that everybody's kind of like learning at the same time. And so if you, if you have that rapport with the people that you're working with, you are relaxed and that learning situation is happening at the same time you're able to be a successful artist, ideally. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad, you know, I feel like anybody who's attended any of my webinars before, a thing I say that is probably obnoxious, but I will continue to say it over and over again, is, you know, the most important thing is to know your audience. And I think that's, you know, one of those things you touched on is to know your community, know what's happening, kind of have a grip of what's what's happening around you. And that's how you can best offer something to, to your audience. Um, I think businesses are most successful when they figure out who their customer is and they create very poignant and pointed marketing that speaks to that individual. And the same is true um, in, in this scenario as well. Um, oh. So in, you know, participating in these kinds of events, particularly around a busy holiday season, since that's, you know, what we have upcoming, what has been an impactful lesson that you've learned? Always have your contact info, um, your website info, and, um, you know, any, any sort of web traffic that you want, you need to have your information out there and visible for people. Um, like if you're doing a, a show where people are walking by a table, um, something like that, always have out a sheet of paper that has like your Instagram on it, um, your business Facebook or your website, your uh, email so that people can walk by and just take a picture of that and boom, they've got it. Like they don't even have to ask you for a card or for a flyer or anything. You just have your information out there so they can take a picture and it's on their phone. Um, that's Amen. super, <laughs> that's super important. Um, I, I learned that like first couple shows, it was like, okay, that's a must, you know, and I have business cards and I have flyers, but it's always just, it's important just to have things out there. So that people have access to them like a hundred percent of the time. Um, yeah. You know, make sure that you have things like PayPal set up or like uh, square for online payments, um, for, um, making those business transactions that aren't in person or are in person, but people only have cards now, you know, people don't carry cash or checks necessarily anymore now. So, um, having the ability to take debit credit card payments, uh, any place, anytime is a must if you're going to be successful, um, make sure that you have your stock ready to go, you know, make sure you have the things that you're going to be selling in a box, uh, inventoried and ready to go to wherever you're going days before your event. Um, you don't want to be doing that the night before you don't want to be doing it the morning of, you don't even want to be doing it the day before, like two days before, like do it a week ahead of time. That way you can think about it. You're going to, if you're an artist of any sort, I guarantee you, you're going to be thinking of the things that are in that box for the week and organizing them uh, as you go, you know, just get ahead of yourself. Um, 
you know, and, and take some care if it's a, if it's a personal, um, you know, hand to hand person to person situation, you know, presentation of yourself makes a big difference. Um, you know, make sure you just look nice, you know, uh, put yourself together, uh, feel happy about how you look and how you feel because it's going to exude from you and it will help sell yourself and what you are creating. Um, and this is something that, you know, all of these things are practice. They happen over time. And it's not just one show, you nail it. It You go and you realize what you can do better every single time. And that's one of the things I found as far as going and setting up a table, putting my art actually out on the table for people to see. You know, when I first started doing this, I was the excited uh, young kid who had brought everything to the show and it was all out there to see. And as time has gone by, I've become more selective about what I take with me and how many things I put out. And it changes the way that things read. Um, a smaller supply of things can sometimes read better. Um, sometimes a smaller supply of things, it's like the grocery store. If there's only one thing on the shelf, no one's gonna buy it. Um, people are funny and you, you have to just kind of take these things as you go and have that little notebook with you at every single show, whether you're a business who's participating with an artist or you're an artist who's participating with a business, have that notebook or that sketchbook that you take notes in and just give yourself some reminders. This is what I'm going to do the next show. Um, it will catch up and it will help you. You'll notice, you know, after two or three of these experiences, um, you'll feel better prepared. You'll feel calmer, um, even as an artist or as a business helping an artist you're going to be better off the further on you go down the road. I mean, it's just, um, and it's not going to be the same for every single business or every single artist either. You know, it's, you're going to have things that are unique to your business or your artist, um, you as an artist that uh, will pop up. Aha, there's that word again. Um, <laughs> but, it, but, but it is, it's like, you have to be on your toes and that's kind of like the whole feel of it is just, you know, take it as it comes and, you know, say la vie, um, take, take the hits and then take, you know, the good stuff too and, you know, roll with it. But we're all in this together and we're all trying to help each other. And so you have to like kind of drop the whole ego and you have to be humble and you have to be sincere. And I think that's another thing that's like, you know, when you go to go to these things, when you prepare for these things, when you're a part of these things, wear that humility, wear that humble self and be sincere with people. You know, that's what people want. That's what people want to see is that humanity in all of us. So that's what you got to bring with you. Well, I mean, those are great great, great answers. Um, so I'm going to say from here, we're going to just dive into these. I have a couple kind of, I wouldn't call them rapid fire. They're like a little bit more extended than rapid fire questions. Um, and I know sure. you've seen these questions and I've, I've already read your answers, which I um, am so excited to share with everyone who's listening. Um, so these are just some quick questions and they come, they're adapted from author Kelly Corrigan, um, who talks about cultivating meaningful and impactful conversations with connections we meet briefly, um, much like how we're all connecting here on Zoom, or maybe we're connecting on YouTube. So first question is, what do you know about being an artist in Wyoming? I know that there's probably few places as tough or rewarding 
to be an artist here, but you have to really be a part of the community here. And you really have to understand, I think, what your place is kind of in the world here. Um, Wyoming moves a little slower. You know, our, our communities move a little different slow, a little differently than the rest of the world. And so you have to bring that patience and that same persistence um, to everything that you do here. Um, you know, things in Wyoming that last, um, there's a continuity to them. And you have to bring that same continuity with you as an artist, as a performer, as a writer. You have to be there every week, every month, and every year, um, plying your trade. And people will recognize you. They'll remember you. Um, they may not remember when their grandkids' birthdays are or whatever, but for whatever reason, they're going to remember you. They're going to say, I remember you from that show in Lander three years ago. And, you know, being patient and being humble and being sincere is just, I think, the biggest part of being an artist here in Wyoming. That's it. I love that. Yeah. What do you want from being an artist in Wyoming? I desperately want to make this a place that really relies on its creativity and its ability to solve problems um, outside the box, which is what artists do. Um, you know, this is a place that is, you know, forever sold itself short, you know, and I think that our communities are due for, um, you know, people that believe in the people as the resource rather than what's underground or what can be, broken out of the rocks you know it's the people that run the shops it's the people that wash the dishes it's the people that cook the food it's the people that bring the mail you know it's the people that bring you your your happy hour beverage um you know but a lot of these people are, are going home and they're writing music or they're writing short stories or they're painting or they're drawing um you know, or they find their inspiration to go do what they do every day to keep this state running in the art that they see, in what the music that they listen to and the stories that they read. And so it really comes down to just, it's a local thing. You know, you have to, you have to support this in the communities because it comes from human beings and human beings are our renewable resource. You know, that's it. Yeah. Well, and last but certainly not least, what do you love about being an artist in Wyoming? Oh, I, I love the fact that what I do asks me to look deeper into the things around me. And it gives me an opportunity to raise the spirits and teach that same sight to other people and it gives me a chance to improve the places that I've lived. You know, I've lived all over the state. I'm a little bit of a tumbleweed, um, you know, and it's amazing to see how some communities are, you know, a little bit poorer than others, a little bit more financially, economically uh, challenged than others, but that it comes down to choices comes down to choices you know of what people are going to support and what they're going to what they're going to risk their support on you know and i think when it comes down to it you know we're we're a state and a community at large who are willing to take chances you know it's in everything that we say as part of our our fiber that we take chances we're cowboy this we're cowboy that you know, now it's time to start taking chances, you know, for the things that give back, you know, take chances for the places like the Nicholas and, and Casper, or the Cooper Creative Center here in Laramie, um, you know, the Laramie Plains Center. And you see that 
people are putting money and in investing in these places and these places are giving back hands over feet with culture, with vibrant parts of our towns that have been missing for generations. And now they're here, you know, and, you know, where does that go from here? Um, we're on the cusp of some big changes, you know, just as far as global economics and their effect on our economy and, you know, how we see ourselves supporting this state and our success in times ahead. And we look to things like, uh, you know, outdoors, uh, uh, you know, in the environment, you know, people coming here to recreate, you know, and then you look at places like uh, New Mexico and it's like, there's an artist community who people travel there just for that, you know? And I think Wyoming is on the cusp of becoming a place where people travel here to learn how to go out into the wild, into nature and see it a different way. And art can do that, art can teach that. And so, you know, together, uh, that's what I see in the future for Wyoming. Well, I love that and look forward to watching it all unfold and get to take it all in. Well, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for questions if anybody has any questions. Um, here you'll also see some contact information for myself on the bottom and for our business counselor here at the WWBC. If you're interested in getting some counseling and working one-on-one -on -one with us, um, you can also be sure to visit our website at wyomingwomen.org to learn about all of our services and fill out our online intake form. <clears throat> I would like to, of course, thank our funding partners. We, our services are made possible through several partnership agencies and our primary funding comes from the US Small Business Administration and the Wyoming Business Council. And we are so thankful for their support and guidance um, and look forward to the work ahead. If you enjoyed this webinar and this Artist Insights series or are looking for others, we have lots of topics coming up and lots of topics recorded previously. So remember to visit our website to either register for webinars under the training tab or to take a look at some of those previous recordings. I'm just gonna check and see if we have any questions. It doesn't look like it. So thank you again so much, Rob, for joining us and sharing your thoughts. Um, I very much so appreciate you taking time and sharing your wisdom. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So as I said before, when we close the webinar today, a survey will pop up on your screen. It's just a quick six question survey. And I ask that you do stay online and complete it for us. We do read each of these and it helps us plan our upcoming calendar and improve our offerings. Thank you again for attending today's webinar on what perhaps was your lunch hour. I very much so look forward to seeing you all again soon.